quick summary on motors, everything you need to know. First of all, you need to understand the energy conversion that takes place in a motor, an electric motor. It converts electrical energy into mechanical energy energy like a fan so if you ever forget the energy conversion just think about a fan you take a fan you plug it into the wall that plugging it into the wall is giving it electrical energy and it takes that electrical energy and it converts it into a spinning motion that keeps us cool that is mechanical energy and how does it do this motors are based on the motor effect which states that a current carrying conductor placed within a magnetic field experiences a magnetic force. Now, what all of this means, let's start with what does current carrying conductor mean? Well, this wire over here, this over here, is a current carrying conductor. It is a wire that carries current. There's current in there. And the reason it carries current is because if we had to draw in the rest of the circuit, it would be connected to a circuit and current flows in the circuit. And you can see here the current would be coming down and down like that. When we place that current carrying conductor within a magnetic field, so here are two magnets, there's the magnetic field. What the motor effect says is that this wire will experience what we call a magnetic force. So the wire this wire over here will either move up or down. To expand a little bit more on the motor effect, what you need to know is that when a conductor, when a wire has a current traveling through it, this wire has its own magnetic field associated with it. And this is something that we learned in previous grades. If you use your right hand, this is something you learned in grade 11. If you use your right hand like this and you curl your fingers like this, you point upwards with your thumb or downwards, whatever. This is the direction of current. So this would be a wire with current flowing in it, my thumb. So current would be going up. And then the direction of your fingers would be the direction of a magnetic field and that magnetic field exists because there's current in the wire. So what you need to understand is that this wire creates its own magnetic field that exists in concentric circles. You can't see it on the diagram, but there's a magnetic field that exists around the wire because of the current flowing through the wire. And that magnetic field, this one over here, interacts with the other magnetic field, this green one over here those two magnetic fields interact. So where does the green magnetic field come from? Well, from these magnets. The interaction between these two magnetic fields causes a force to be felt on the wire. And this is the motor effect, essentially. It causes that wire to move or rotate. And that's where we get the word mechanical energy from. So we are going to use our left-hand rule, Fleming's left-hand rule for motors, to determine which way this wire will move. In other words, will it move up or will it move down? Just very quickly, and I have a separate video on the left-hand rule in a lot more detail, but you can see that this thumb, I call it the F finger, the father finger, then we've got the mother finger and the child finger. The F finger is the force finger, direction of the force. This thumb is pointing up, this wire is going to move up. See this blue arrow is indicating that the wire is going to move up. This M finger, the mother finger, the magnetic field finger, you always point from the north to the south. So you can see that the fingertip is pointing towards the south. That is always going to be true. And this finger here, the middle finger, the current finger is pointing in the direction of the current. So we're saying within this wire over here, the current is coming this way along that arrow. And because of the direction of the magnetic field, because of that finger and because of the current finger, my thumb is pointing up, which means the wire will move upwards. Here you can see another diagram of the left-hand rule. So if you'd like another more detailed video of me going through examples on the left-hand rule, check out the next video in the playlist. Then in terms of motors, they have different components. So the coil or the wire or the armature, that's the thing that I've highlighted here in green. This conductor, it transmits current, so current will flow through this conductor. You can see here the arrows show the direction of the current flowing through the conducting wire, but it also experiences a force, okay, a magnetic force because of the motor effect. The current will flow like this along the wire and then into the slip ring. So from the slip ring into the carbon brush and then into the external circuit just like that and the current flow will continue like that 
Another thing that you need to know is the difference between an AC motor and a DC motor. So on the screen, I have what we call an AC motor. The reason for that, an AC motor makes use of slip rings. These are slip rings. There's two slip rings. It also makes use of an AC power source. So plugging it into a wall. This is a symbol for an AC power source. So as you can see, sides AC, so when they refer to sides AC of the coil, they're referring to the side over here, AC. And then they say BD, which would be the side over here, BD experience forces in the opposite direction and that makes sense because if this goes up upward force and then bd goes down that would enable the coil to spin if this is your coil and this is ac and this is bd they are going to rotate or they're going to experience a force in a different direction so you can see this side goes up and this side goes down and that enables it to spin and now remember this is an AC motor, which means it makes use of AC current, which actually means that the motor, because it uses AC current, it'll change direction periodically. Remember, AC means alternating current. That changes direction periodically. And it says, yeah, there's a reverse in its direction every time the coil is in the vertical position. On the other hand, we can get a DC motor, which uses a DC power supply, which is a battery. So you can see here, this one had a battery, but this AC motor had an AC power source. So most of the time we will show you one with a battery, so a DC motor. And again, because AC and BC experience a force in opposite directions, that causes the coil to experience a torque, which is a turning force, which rotates the coil. And this over here is called a split ring commutator. So DC uses a split ring commutator, whereas AC uses slip rings. And the split ring commutator, that reverses the direction of the current in the coil every half resolution. And what that means is that the coil in a DC motor will spin in the same direction. It's not like the AC motor where there's a reverse in the direction every time the coil is in the vertical position. So this split ring commutator basically makes sure that the, the coil continues to spin in one direction by using direct current. There are some uses of motors in everyday life. I've already mentioned the fan, but we can also use it in power tools like electric drills, even washing machines. And a question that they love asking is which factors affect the power of an electric motor? Or how do I increase the speed of rotation? How do we increase the speed of rotation? So we can increase the strength of the magnetic field. So we use stronger magnets. So these make sure that they are stronger. We can increase the current strength. Remember in motors, we provide it with either a DC power source or an AC power source, which provides a current. So if we make sure that that current is stronger by increasing the EMF or decreasing the coil's resistance, so maybe using thicker wire, then that will increase the power of the electric motor. It'll make it spin faster. Or we can increase the number of turns in the coil. In the next video, we'll be going over a little bit more about the left hand rule and how to determine the direction of the force on a coil.